In the gaming section of most display reviews I've published since 2021, I've consistently highlighted the importance of HGIG or source-based tone mapping for achieving the most accurate and impactful HDR gaming experience. However, this typically requires users to manually select the appropriate picture preset or adjust specific settings to activate the function. Well, I have just finished testing the first display I've seen to automatically do this without needing user intervention from the off, namely the MSI 272URX 27-inch 4K UHD QD OLED monitor with 240Hz refresh rate. MSI's secret lies in how they have configured the monitor to intelligently respond to HDR10 metadata embedded within the video signal. Let me show you. If you feed the MSI 272URX a max DML or maximum display mastering luminance of 1000 nits or 4000 nits, the QD OLED monitor will adapt its HDR10 tone curve accordingly to preserve more specular highlight detail within its peak brightness capability. But here's the thing. When playing HDR games, most consoles and PCs don't transmit ST2086 HDR10 static metadata. In such cases, many displays will default to a 4000 nit or even 10,000 nit tone curve, which dilutes the HDR impact and can lead to an overly dark image. Not so with the MSI 272URX. When no ST2086 metadata is present in the video signal, the monitor would hard clip at the panel's native peak brightness, fulfilling the most fundamental requirement for HGIG or source-based tone mapping to work effectively. Before getting into the maximum tone map luminance and maximum full-frame tone map luminance values as per HGIG guidelines, it's important to know that like all QD OLED monitors, the MSI 272URX offers two display HDR settings, namely the default True Black 400 and an alternate Peak 1000 nits mode. In the display HDR True Black 400 mode, peak brightness was capped at around 480 nits up to a 10% window size. Whereas once we switch to the peak 1000 nits mode, peak brightness could go beyond 1100 nits on a 3% window or smaller. However, Display HDR True Black 400 employed a more relaxed ABL or automatic brightness limiter algorithm compared to the peak 1000 nits mode, even though both presets delivered similar full screen luminance of approximately 270 nits. In practical terms, the peak 1000 nits mode was better at preserving specular highlight detail above 500 nits, while the display HDR True Black 400 mode appeared brighter in high APL scenes due to its less aggressive ABL. This trade-off seems to stem from limitations of the QD OLED panel supplied by Samsung Display, a characteristic we've observed consistently since the first QD OLED monitor launched in 2022. So ultimately, it's a matter of choosing which compromise you are willing to live with, at least for now, because MSI has confirmed that it will roll out an EOTF Boost software update in the near future to improve the brightness of the peak 1000 nits mode on the 272URX without sacrificing EOTF accuracy. Anyway, coming back to HGIG which is automatically engaged on the monitor in the absence of ST2086 metadata, the default display HDR True Black 400 mode would yield max TML and max FFTML values of 550 nits, whereas in the peak 1000 nits mode, these figures would go up to 1000 nits, as you would expect. Now, while it might seem tempting to go for the 1000 nits setting, doing so can actually cause more than a few HDR scenes to appear dimmer in terms of APL or average picture level compared to the True Black 400 mode. For this reason, we strongly recommend sticking with the default display HDR True Black 400 mode and ensuring HGIG is configured correctly. After all, the entire premise of HGIG is to allow the source device to tone map HDR10 content up to the display's native peak brightness without losing highlight detail. Let's set HDR aside for the moment and focus on SDR performance. Most of the SDR picture presets on this monitor are mapped to the QD OLED panel's naturally white color gamut, with no available options to manually adjust or constrain the color space. The only exception is the sRGB preset found under the Pro Mode submenu, 
which accurately tracks the sRGB slash Rexon 109 gamut, making it the most suitable choice for SDR content. That said, color temperature adjustments are locked out in sRGB mode, meaning that you are limited to the factory calibration. Fortunately, on our review sample, the default was already highly accurate, with peak white luminance measuring close to the sRGB target of 80 nits. However, this will likely appear too dim for most users, in which case increasing the brightness setting from the default value of 15 to 30 or even higher will improve visibility without compromising accuracy. Although there was a very slight red tint observed in the grayscale measurements, it remained below the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Era 3. As a result, the monitor delivered impressively accurate colorimetry even on this demanding color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured. What's missing from the picture menu is a gamma control. So if you want a flat 2.4 gamma look with deeper blacks and greater image depth for Rec. 709 SDR viewing in a dimly lit room, you will need to rely on ICC profiling rather than just simply changing a menu setting. This IP3 color gamut coverage measured 99% in UV terms, while Rec. 2020 coverage was 81% with the underlying spectral power distribution showing beautifully distinct red, green, and blue peaks indicative of quantum dot technology. The MSI 272URX exhibited absolutely pristine bright uniformity typical of QD OLED, manifesting no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting even off-axis. Dark uniformity on our review sample looked average though, with some faint vertical bands and side vignetting visible on full field grey slides just above black, though fortunately they were less apparent in challenging low light content. Native 10-bit gradation was top notch, be it on this rotating quantization test pattern from the Spears and Mansell UHD HDR benchmark disk, the grey ramp pattern from the display HDR app, and even this killer scene from the 4K Blu-ray of the Green Knight. While the headline refresh rate of the MSI 272URX was always going to be its 240Hz refresh rate which should appeal to high-end PC gamers, the monitor had no problem handling 24, 25, and 50 frames per second content at all, presenting smooth motion without any frame skipping or frame rate conversion jada. When it comes to connectivity, the MSI 272URX is very well spec providing a DisplayPort 2.1 socket with full 80 gigabits per second bandwidth, two HDMI 2.1 ports supporting the full 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 and DSC specifications, as well as a USB-C DisplayPort with 98 watt power delivery. Measuring using an NVIDIA LDAT device which takes into account the mouse click, CPU processing, operating system, game application, GPU rendering and finally the display. Average end-to-end -end system latency came in at 11.8 milliseconds, paving the way for incredibly responsive gameplay. In addition to lower input lag, the combination of 240 FPS video signal paired with 240 Hz screen refresh rate also resulted in very high motion clarity free of black smearing artifacts, courtesy of OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time. VRR support including NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility allowed for smooth gameplay without frame drops or tearing artifacts, but VRR flicker remained unavoidable in a handful of VRR games especially on static menus, though the frequency and intensity did not seem as obvious or bothersome as that witnessed on larger OLED TVs. Curiously, while the MSI 272URX was capable of reproducing full 444 chroma in SDR mode, Chroma resolution dropped to 422 in HDR across all refresh rates. Thankfully, because of the monitor's incredibly high pixel density, an impact from this chroma subsampling was barely perceptible even on static text at 100% scaling, let alone during fast-paced gaming. The 272URX offers what arguably is the most comprehensive suite of anti-burn-in measures for you to tweak to your liking and even though the pixel shifting cannot be fully disabled, there's some over-provisioning of pixels beyond the 3840x3160 UHD resolution, such that pixel shifting will never cause edges of the picture to be cropped off however slightly. On top of that, 
MSI backs the 272URX with a 3-year warranty that includes coverage for OLED burn-in, bringing it in line with the industry standard for premium QD OLED gaming monitors. Like all QD OLED displays, the screen would turn grey when hit by direct light due to the absence of a polarizer, so careful positioning of the monitor is critical to prevent a noticeable loss of ambient contrast in a well-lit environment. Let's sum up. The MSI 272URX is an outstanding 27-inch 4K QD OLED monitor that's impressively specced, boasting a 240Hz refresh rate, full bandwidth 80 gigabits per second display port 2.1, and all the hallmark advantages of QD OLED technology including inky blacks, vibrant colors, wide viewing angles, class-leading screen uniformity, and the absence of near-black chrominance overshoot artifacts. Motion handling and native 10-bit gradation were both excellent, and at a very reasonable street price of around £700 at this time of publication for a cutting-edge 4K OLED monitor, the MSI 272URX rightfully earns our highly recommended Best Value Award. Of course, no monitor is perfect. While our review unit came well calibrated out of the box in sRGB mode, we would have liked to see a gamma control in the picture menu, allowing users to easily achieve flat 2.4 gamma for deeper blacks and enhanced image depth during darkroom viewing of Rec. 709 SDR content. The AI vision mode also strays from picture accuracy, and the monitor lacks support for Dolby Vision, black frame insertion or BFI, and anti-VRR flicker mitigation, features that can be found on some competing models from other brands. That said, these are relatively minor drawbacks, and shouldn't overshadow what is overall a superb gaming monitor which is also the first we've tested to automatically activate HDIG or source-based tone mapping when playing HDR games on consoles and PCs. To find out why HDR games generally look better on a display with proper HDRG support, please watch my explanation video by clicking here.